Hey everybody, welcome back to the PPF Academy. My name is Ron Harris, where we discuss all things related to paint protection film. Today, I want to talk to you about tools and the tools we use uh, here in our shop for uh, applying or installing paint protection film on vehicles. Now, a lot of times people think, you know, when you're installing paint protection film, you're just going to be using uh, some spray bottles and, uh, you know, maybe some, some squeegees. Uh, to install film and that's about it but it goes beyond that um, in my eyes I believe and I'm going to share with you some of the tools that uh, that I like to use when installing paper protection film whether it be uh, just a partial front full front full body wraps interior pieces you name it uh, we try to think out of the box here when it comes to applying film uh, and be non-traditional in some of our practices and, and installation techniques. So let's get started here. First off, I think it's very important to have uh, a nice pouch. Um, and having a nice pouch really can help keep your tools organized, keep your installations a little cleaner. And when I say cleaner, because you're not sticking your hands in your pockets, you, if you clean and blow out this pouch every so often, you don't have to worry about picking up debris off of your hands and then transferring that debris onto uh, a vehicle versus if you're sticking your hands in your pockets and reaching for a squeegee or reaching for a knife, you're gonna pick up lint or, or uh, maybe you washed your pants with a receipt in there and now you have all this little white paper um, that gets washed in your clothes and, and you know what I'm talking about, the, just those little white fluffies that get in there. So having a, having a good tool belt or a good tool pouch really is, is beneficial. This one is from uh, uh, Dirty Pouches, Mike Sanchez, and uh, he was nice enough to embroider my name on there. The, uh, the belt that I have is from uh, Geek Wraps, uh, and it has a, a little magnets in the sides here. I think it's just one on this belt. There's a little, a little magnet in here. And magnets are great, but magnets also suck when you're installing paint protection film, or any film for that matter. Uh, if you snap a blade and it doesn't make it into your snapper box or you're just sloppy and you snap blades and let them lay around, your, uh, a loose blade may stick to this and uh, eventually cut you or scratch a car or cut a car or something like that. So uh, I'm a fan of magnets, but I'm not a big fan of magnets. Now, uh, you probably want to know what's in my pouch. And in the pouch, obviously, I have uh, knives here. I have two different types of uh, of uh, uh, NT cutters. This one is uh, a, a knife that holds five blades and it's kind of like a magazine cartridge on a, on a gun. And you can take and pull this out and pull that blade out and pull it back like so and uh, um, extract a new blade out of it and get a new blade. My personal preference are the uh, uh, red dots. And with the red dots, I like to use these nice carbon blades, you can see that carbon blade there. Uh, really like these carbon blades a lot. So, uh, very important, we have some knives for the little bit of trimming that we're gonna do. Uh, I like to have scissors for cutting, so I have some scissors in my bag, uh, whether I'm cutting bulk film uh, to lay on a car, or if I've got some film laid out on a car and I wanna make a cut, but I don't wanna cut, say, some plastic grills or anything in there, I can stick this in there and it's the way it's angled, I can kind of get into places and, and trim up that film. So, uh, some nice scissors, Fiskars. I actually picked these up at uh, like a sewing shop um, this is for fabric. They're really nice and really sharp. So I've got those. Uh, tweez tweezers, you ever use tweezers for anything? I've got a set of, of nice tweezers to uh, grab onto film if I've trimmed something right along an edge grab that film, pull it back. Um, you're not sitting there digging at it, digging at it. You can just grab it and, and pull it off. Tucking tools. Let's get into some tucking tools here. Uh, these are from Geek Wraps as well. They get plenty of use in my shop. Um, if you can see these, these are all magnetized and that's the only thing I don't like about them is that they're magnetized. They're great if you want to stick them on something. They stick to things. Uh, Apparently not to that, but uh, they'll stick to themselves. These, I don't really use this end of it right here, per se. It's more this end right here, nice and flexible. 
What I like to do is if I have to pick up an edge that we've laid down, I can get this underneath the edge and I can actually fish this up the film if I've got a little piece of debris on the edge. Also great for tucking behind gaskets. So when you're tucking behind a gasket, you can use a couple of these and get right in behind the gasket, lift it up with one and start tucking with your second one and move, move on down. There's also these tools here that they use more, uh, well, all, both of these are used in vinyl, but uh, this is, these are used in vinyl wrapping as well. And these work just as well. I just prefer these ones here. And this is an edge wrap tool that I like from Scott Tools. This one isn't magnetized. And I don't know if you can see the curvature of that, but I like this tool because I can get in, say to an edge where I wanna wrap some film but I can't get my fingers in there, or I can't get a squeegee all around, I can take this and, and run it up and down, or, or come in and pull and tighten it down. Uh, and it's got this little point out over here. Don't really use that for a whole lot. This is the edge I use. There's also a, a tool called a sun tucker that some guys use. It's a little bit bigger than this. I like this because it's a stick and just fits in my bag much easier. Moving on, uh, some people don't use these in, in their installations, but I like to use them uh, on occasion, are hard cards. This is uh, the Pro Tools Now suede wing, I guess they call these wings, yeah. So, uh, great card, um, you can sand these. I like to sand these and make them nice and smooth. Sometimes they come in and they're a little rough, so before each install, I'll take a little 2000 grit sandpaper and, and smooth that out. Uh, it's going to scratch your film, but most guys are installing self-healing film, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, the suede end is really nice. This end is really nice for, for really just locking down some film. One thing that I've done is I've added this ghost glove. It's a, like a sleeve that goes on the card, and this is the card inside of here. And uh, this sucker here is freaking awesome. This, whatever this material is, just glides across vinyl, paint protection film, uh, the car itself. You can really put a lot of force and it just, whether it's wet or dry, just glides right across that film. Uh, so if the top of your film is dry and you go to squeegee with a regular squeegee, it's gonna chatter and grab and, and uh, not gonna wanna move. This will move and it will move some water uh, and it will kink your film if you're not careful with it. So. I've got that, and I've also got a matching glove that goes with it. Now, let me grab another glove out of the drawer because a lot of guys say, oh, yeah, I've been using gloves for a long time. Not the same glove. This is not the same glove. Down here in the bottom of my drawer, I'm going to pull out from the same company another wrap glove. This is one of their yellow wrap gloves, and I see people uh, talk about these. These do not glide across paint protection film like these do. These are a little grabbier, a little stickier. These will glide like butter. Just without water or without solution or with solution, these suckers will glide across the paint or across the paint protection film. So really nice glove, really durable. Throw it in the washer when you get it dirty. I use these for tucking edges. So I'll take my torch or my heat gun and start heating up edges and tuck everything around on the edges uh, and it makes it look great, uh, seals them up. You don't have to worry about the film being grabby as you're doing this. Uh, so this works awesome. Let's get into some squeegees here. So I use probably, oh, one more thing before we get into squeegees is having a nice snapper box. So you've got your blade here uh, you want to snap a blade. This is uh, just a snapper box I got from, from Dirty Tools, Mike Sanchez, and I customized it with a little carbon fiber film and put a little Ceramic Pro logo on there. It's all cool, just so I know that it's mine. It's easily identified in the shop. Must have, I don't know if you can hear the, the blades in there rattling around. Play along with the music. So we've got that, so squeegees. Um, I carry probably, let's see, I've got four different types of squeegees. Now, for a long time, let's, let's backtrack. So when you went through your training, 
you were probably using a squeegee that uh, looked like this. And it was just part of a big long one and they'd cut it off and you could see the cut marks where the person cut it and then they came along with these little uh, white things that came on top and these are great. These really help hold the squeegee in your hand or you know so you can get a lot of force. But uh, a company called uh, Fusion decided to come out with their own and these are these are the ones that that I use in the shop here. Probably the most popular ones I use are the yellow and the green for applying film. Green is a little more uh, malleable or, or a, little, a little more flexible than the, the yellow. The yellow is not quite as flexible. But the, I'll tell you this, the, the stiffer and, and harder the, the uh, squeegee is, the better it's gonna glide across these films that are really hydrophobic, say like a steck film. So if you're using something that's really rubbery and, and, and flexible, like this uh, pink squeegee here from Fusion, it's gonna get real grabby. You might be able to make one swipe or two swipes across your film and then it's gonna get real grabby and start squeaking and chattering versus using say a yellow one or even uh, a red one. Uh, while you're installing, but I keep all four on hand for, for various situations and I keep different sizes. I've got some, some smaller sizes in my bag for getting into little areas. And uh, what I used to use a lot were these, um, like this pink clean here and I've got a, an orange crush. The orange crush and the pink clean are really, really popular. Uh, really uh, flexible, doesn't matter which color you get. Some are, you know, obviously the pink is gonna be really flexible. And I use this to get in the, the valleys on hoods, those, those uh, really deep valleys on some of these truck hoods and, and car hoods, you know, I can uh, do a final swipe with that uh, and, and really get that squeegee down in the valley. Kind of same with this one. This one's a little bit easier to push down there and get down in there. Uh, I used these for a long time, in fact, so, so much that they almost look worn out. One of the add-ons that you can add on to this, uh, and, and uh, the uh, Fusion tools, they, uh, they don't, not everybody makes, I mean, not just Fusion tools makes these. Mike Sanchez has these, this is his right here. It's a nice, pretty blue. Uh, his don't come in various uh, stiffnesses, I don't think, but you can change that with one of these tools here. Uh, so these, uh, this is called the, the hand job or the handy, and this is from Fusion Tool, and you can just slide any of their little doohickeys in here, like so. And now you've got a really nice hand tool to apply your film, really gives you a lot of pressure, really stiffens up this blade as well. And so Fusion makes one, Mike Sanchez has one. Uh, the drawback to the Fusion, it's magnetic. And again, I'm just not a fan of the magnetic tools, uh, especially if you're snapping blades a lot. I've grabbed this before where I've snapped the blade and thought it was in my, uh, little blade box and it wasn't, and I've cut my, cut my palm open grabbing this or cut a finger open grabbing it that way, and you, you know, it's, it's not good. So I always have to check. It's great if you wanna stick it on the side of a car. It's awesome. Uh, Mike Sanchez's uh, Dirty Tools works the same way, and I bring Mike Sanchez up because he just happens to be a friend of mine. Um, but he, his is called the Pro Hand Tool. No magnets. Um, no screws to tighten down. Everything fits in there pretty tight. His will take the, uh, his blades. It'll take the, the fusion, fusion blades. And a uh, little tip he gave me is if you cut these a little shorter and this goes in there a little farther, like so, goes in a little farther there, it actually gives you uh, a, an even stiffer blade. So window tenders use this a lot. You'll see window tenders use hand tools like this. One other hand tool is, that is a must is this little bad boy right here, especially if you're working on big hoods, a Macan hood, Audi hoods, truck hoods. You wanna get down in the center and you're a little vertically challenged or you're fat like me and you, your belly gets in the way. 
this will this will give you a lot of reach, gives you a lot of power on top of the film to get the film down, squeegeed, um, and get out all that moisture so you don't end up with bubbles uh, uh, the next day, little air bubbles or water bubbles left over the next day. So we've covered squeegees, knives, tucking tools, hard cards. Uh, another important thing is, is towels. Yes, you have to have towels. Um, we don't want to use those fluffy microfiber towels. I can't stand them for installing film. No matter how clean you think they are, they're going to leave some kind of lint behind. These are lint-free glass towels. You could probably pick, uh, pick up a bag of these from uh, the rag company. Uh, go over there and talk to Levi and uh, pick up some of these nice no-nap microfiber towels. They're great when you're wiping something down, you're doing a final wipe on something. Uh, you can wrap your squeegee in it if you want to absorb some water on an edge. Put your squeegee on here, wrap it, start uh, really squeegeeing your edges off. But it's really important to have a good stack of these towels, clean towels, ones that you haven't dropped on the floor, drug through sawdust or anything like that. You don't want to get that in your film. Let's move on to uh, uh, keg sprayers. Inside of this cart here, I've got a, a four drawer cart with a door on it, is a keg sprayer with a 25 foot hose and attached to that 25 foot hose is this sprayer right here. Um, this has got my slip solution in it. This, this is, to me, this is a must. You, you, you need to have a pressurized sprayer. I have this pressurized to 100 PSI. I can rinse out anything that I uh, say I'm installing something and I see a piece of debris. I can use this and really rinse it out. Get it loose from the film, rinse it out, get lots of slip in there, lots of slip on the top, squeegee it out. These, these typical sprayers right here, you know, are, are good. Um, and I, this is what I use for my tack solution, just a regular trigger sprayer for tack. But this is a must. Another must, I think, is uh, this water blade here. So this water blade, just prior to, say, laying a hood or a fender down, we're going to mist that panel. We've already cleaned it. We've already wiped it. We've got our film ready to go. I want to mist that panel and squeegee it off and just make sure that no dust or anything has settled on it in that time that I was uh, prepping my film to lay on the car. So final thing I do is mist the panel, squeegee it down with this little water blade here, gets it nice and clean, mist it again, and then psh, pop your film on the car and, and start installing. Really good. Another tool I use, this is from uh, Scan Grip. This is a, uh, a headlight uh, or head mounted light. You put it on your head here and voila, you can see in some of the dark recesses where you're installing. If your shop's not very well lit or if you're on location at a customer's house or something, uh, you've got this light here. Cool little feature on it is it's got this little deal here. You can turn it on, turn it off with your hand. Um, sometimes when you're squeegeeing, it, it turns itself on and off. <laughs> so uh, I usually just leave it on and, and uh, and turn it off manually. Um, tape measure, tape measure is very important to have. Uh, I don't know if you guys carry tape measures with you. Um, tools, actual tools. You need some tools to take stuff apart. Uh, this is a screwdriver I just happen to have on my cart for pulling license plates off. And I've got different bits for different types of screws that we might want to take off. Um, you're going to need some dental floss. I don't have any out here or some thin fishing line to remove uh, your, uh, say, side emblems or, or badges off a car that are held on with double-sided tape. And you always want to carry some double-sided tape with you as well or have double-sided tape in your cart or somewhere in your shop to reinstall badges. Another great tape is, and uh, I'll have to uh, post a link, is this stuff right here. This stuff is phenomenal. And we use this on the Tesla badges. So this is double-sided tape, but it doesn't have that foam barrier in it. Um, so it's almost like scotch tape, but it, I mean, it, it's super sticky. And uh, we get this off of Amazon, really, really cheap. So I have it in uh, inch roll, and I think this is uh, maybe two and a half inches, this bigger one here. We carry that. Um, we also, uh, most of us are probably detailers. Uh, so we always carry a little detailing clay with us to uh, 
pre when we're cleaning panels, make sure that everything's off of there. I always have some masking tape in my drawer if I want to mask something off. So I've got some really nice masking tape and I can mask off an edge if I don't want the film to stick to it. Say I'm doing a bulk install and I don't want it to stick on the adjoining panel. I'll throw some masking tape on that adjoining panel and uh, this will keep it from sticking. I can squeegee my stuff down. And then another benefit to it is if you want to trim, you can trim on top of this if you, if you need to trim on top of it. Uh, and this lowers the risk of actually cutting into the paint on the adjoining panel. So you've got a little tape on there. Once it's all done, pull the tape off, pull your film off, and the uh, panel's nice and clean without any uh, cut marks in it. Probon, I always have a little Probon with me. You never know when you're going to need it. You never know when something's having trouble sticking. Uh, we keep a little Probon in the shop. Works really well. I wouldn't use the uh, Primer 94 or 93 from 3M. It's just too, way too strong. A little pen. This is a, kind of a long, oh, long bullnose pen. Um, this pen here can get into recesses if you're laying a piece of bulk film and you want to mark something to cut it. You can get your film in there, hold your film with your fingers and mark where you want to say make a, a, just a bulk cut or if you want to do a nice precision cut, you can get in there and it's uh, got a metal shroud on it here but, uh, so it stays nice and rigid but you can make a nice cut. Pull your film back, take your scissors or your knife and cut along the line and it washes right off with uh, your uh, water alcohol mixture. Uh, these are on Amazon. It's a uh, long-nosed pattern marker is what they call it. Uh, made by a company called FastCap. I believe that's what it is. Syringes. We always keep syringes on hand here. Um, you never know when there's going to be a party, right? <laughs> Uh, no, we use these for uh, little, little uh, moisture bubbles that uh, say maybe it's not going to be beneficial to try to force them out or, or let them dry out. They may be a little too big to let them dry out. We can always pop them with this. What I like to do is pull that sucker off the back end. That lets everything just kind of flow free through there. So you, uh, you don't, I never puncture straight on top of the bubble. I always do it right at the very edge of the bubble and then take my finger and just kind of roll my finger over and push everything into this moisture, air, whatever, um, pulling that plunger out allows everything to just want to move right into that, uh, this little reservoir here and dump right out. Not that uh, you're getting that much moisture out of it. And uh, I always cut up some of my tubes and make little hood props. So I've got a couple of these here and we'll set them down to prop a hood up. And I see guys putting boxes. Um, these don't hold debris like a box does. Don't, they don't hold lint, dust, uh, like, a, like a cardboard box that's been halfway across the country on a UPS truck. Uh, these are, uh, to me, are a lot cleaner. And I just cut them off with a, uh, what do you call it, a sawzall. Just cut them off with a sawzall the same length. And you can make little longer ones or shorter ones if you want. But I keep a couple of these on my cart. And I always have my lint roller on my cart. Lint roller off all the... Dog hair, cat hair, human hair, lint, dust, whatever. Um, I, I buy these in, in bulk at, at Sam's Club or Costco. Lint rollers, definitely a must on the lint rollers here. And uh, let's get to heat guns. So I've got a nice ugh, high quality heat gun from Snap-on here. Uh, great gun, it's got a temperature control in the back. I've actually got the dial marked to where I like to uh, heat film and it doesn't get it so hot that it melts it or burns the crap out of your hands. Uh, get the film nice and warm so you can get uh, valleys laid down and, and uh, locked down or get some edges locked down. This, this is a definite must. Don't buy the, the Wagner one with the digital thing on the back that looks really cool and everything. You don't need that. They're garbage. Even the old Wagners are garbage. You need something that you can control the heat coming out of this, out of this gun. And this has got a good uh, fan in it too. Window tenders like these guns because they move a lot of air. So you want to move some air to dry out your film if you're trying to dry out an edge. You, you've got to get air moving across it to make that moisture evaporate. So perfect gun for that. 
My favorite tool is this Hot Gun HG400. Uh, these are available from uh, Amazon. The, you don't get the tank with it. The, the tank, you can buy these at Home Depot. You can get those really fat green ones that they stand a little bit better on their own, the camping ones. Uh, but we always buy the blue ones from, from Home Depot. You can get map gas, which is yellow. It burns a little hotter, but trust me, you don't want to get any hotter than this. And this is just ignites like that. The uh, hot air comes out of the end. I don't know if you can see the flame in there, but the flame's not exposed versus the uh, old school kind that these, uh, you see some tinners, you see a lot of vinyl guys, they use something like this. And I, I, I use this occasionally, but you've, again, you've got that open flame and we're dealing with alcohol and alcohol is going to ignite. Uh, so we've got uh, this. I love this for ceiling edges. Love this for ceiling edges under a hood or along a fender. I can get that film nice and hot to the point where it's just ready to melt and take that, this ghost glove here and roll that film underneath and it sticks so hard. I mean, once it's stuck, it's stuck down. And you can't, I mean, you can get it back up, yeah. Uh, but you're gonna end up tearing the film up. It sticks so well using this type of a, a heat gun on it. So um, you don't wanna necessarily use this to say do a valley, you might overheat the film. Uh, but I use this when I uh, have to lift film. Say I have to lift a section of film back up after I've already laid it and it's a little tacked. When you're pulling that film, you're actually stretching the film out and that film's gonna stay a little stretched out. So I come back with this heater, put some slip on the top to protect it obviously, but uh, come back with this heater and I warm it up and I can see that film shrink back to its original shape really quick with this. Uh, and there's no cords attached to it. So I put a little uh, film, the, the, uh, the deal that the film comes on, you know, the rolls inside your boxes. Uh, I'll warm this up really good and, and cut off the end a little bit and stick it in here so I've got a nice little stand for that. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. It's time to get to work. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you get some benefit out of it. This is Ron for the PPF Academy, all things related to PPF. I'll see you on the next one.